Hello everyone! Thank you so much for coming on my channel, Your Canadian Blind Girl. Stay tuned to see what I have for you today. Okay, it's finally here. The long-awaited How to Paint Your Nails Blind video tutorial. Alright, and I do have a giveaway. Now the giveaways that are on my channel, they will not be featured specifically in the titles. So you're going to want to make sure you watch every video just because um, YouTube is changing how they do everything with SEO and all of that with giveaways in the title and I understand why. So in this video down below you have to comment by the end of... Okay so the competition is until August 1st is when I'm picking so comment below. Is when I'm going to go through and I'm going to pick the winner of who gets this giveaway. This is an amazing tool. Um, in all of my products that I'm using, I apologize in my last makeup videos because everyone was complaining that I did not have links. So, what you need. Alright, so I'm setting up my second angle. You will need, you know when I do tutorials, we, we always have to have weird stuff. Alright, so we have the Elmer's glue. And we also have masking tape. So in case you cannot get, you don't win the giveaway and you cannot get... Um, these things that I recommend. You can use masking tape and glue. I just find these guides made my life so much easier with the nails that I have and um, they're reusable so I don't have to make sure I have a fresh supply of masking tape. You can also buy nail uh, nail guides that go around the whole finger um, that are adhesive but again you have to buy them all the time and like if you're like me I don't have a ton of money to actually just go and buy stuff just for my nails. Um, like I did a makeup video that like all of the makeup for my whole face from the Dollar Tree was only like $12.50, $12.50 and that will probably last me for a year because my makeup lasts me forever and I don't switch it out when I'm supposed to. So turning on my second camera, we have these nail tip guides. Um, I opened them on another video because my friend and I are going to do a challenge where she's going to paint one of my hands and I'm going to paint one of her hands. My friend is fully sighted. And anyways, it comes in a box. And these really, they're just from a manufacturer in China. They really do not have a professional name. They're like a horseshoe clip. Okay, so they're like a horseshoe <clears throat> with a clip behind it. And it, so it kind of like slides onto the end of your fingernail, onto the end of your finger, underneath your fingernail. And so I will find, haha! <laughs> So I just accidentally grabbed the first one. If you're wondering why there is masking tape on my table, it's because I I did that so that it was easier for me to navigate where I was keeping my camera. So you want to put the, the nail tips on first. Now I'm only going to do one hand because I do both hands essentially the, the exact same. But if I do them, like I have to wait for one hand to completely dry before I do the other one. And um, yeah, so that's that's going to take forever. So now I forget with how many, I think there's like 25 uh, clips with all different sizes and uh, you can use them on your toenails because I have used them on my toenails before. They are slightly different um, and I like mine rather tight uh, because then they don't go sliding off on me. So I do like mine rather tight and I am, I just realized I think I'm holding my hands out of both, out of sight of both the cameras. I apologize for being such a horrible YouTuber. <laughs> so, all right, so I have my nail guides. I have to feel to see if they're all on. And I'm actually going to move my second angle camera so that, okay, so that, let's see, okay, yeah. All right, so I have my nail guides on and, um, now you can use masking tape for around the cuticles, but I find as soon as the masking tape gets slightly wet, it pulls away and it doesn't adhere. So I use nail glue, or not nail glue, not nail glue, uh, white Elmer's craft glue. Now if you're doing your nails for the first time, I highly recommend that you stick all your materials, so your glue, your nail polish, stick it in the fridge because then you can feel exactly where it is on your nail and your finger until you get used to it. So the supplies that I am using, I have a Sally Hansen nail oil and I the only reason I'm using this brand, I'm not getting any kind of sponsorship for any of this stuff. I'm just naming it because people ask. 
um, is it has a nail brush applicator. This is perfect. So before you go, if you haven't really gotten in the habit of painting your nails and you're kind of new to it, doing it blind, I highly, highly recommend getting this nail oil just for the fact that you stick it in the fridge. Now I know the nail oil won't work the way it like the way it's supposed to when it's cold, but you will be able to feel where you're painting on your nails and stick with this before you go. So do this every day for like two weeks before you go to nail color and I'm telling you guaranteed that, and this is a tip for sighted people and visually impaired, because if you're sighted and you, you're really, really bad at doing your nails, uh, practice with the nail, nail oil. Like, I'm telling you. Anyways, so we have that nail oil. We have, um, I use a peel-off base coat. Um, I use, I don't use latex peel-off. Uh, I think this is UNT, U-N-T. It's a peel-off base coat that I use. Um, it's just easier for me when I have to clean up my nails because then I know that all the nail polish is off. Um, so I just switched to this and I love it. And then I use a matte top coat as my base on top of the peel-off because of the way it dries, uh, nail polish color sticks to it. And I also have, oh, my rubber band just fell off. I just felt it go. Okay, so my clear coat is actually in my right hand. Um, then the rubber band just fell off this. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm actually gonna put masking tape on it because I use Sally Hansen. It's the cheapest at Walmart right now. <laughs> Everything in my life is being controlled by cheapness. Um, so I put masking tape, I put some kind of identifier on it because like I said, all the bottles feel the same. And so I play Russian roulette with my nails, nail color, because I don't know from day to day what color I'm actually getting on my nails. So, uh, but I always want to know what my top coat is. All right, so that's what we're using and okay. So we're going to do the glue. All right, so um, my glue is not cold in the fridge because I've done this so much. Um, I actually can do my nails now almost without my nail guides. Uh, these were brand new because I was going to use them with my friend because I didn't want to use all my old ones that had nail polish all over them. Um, and then we got interrupted. So sorry, um, when we do this again, you're going to have to use my, my used ones. that <laughs> They all have nail polish on them, but don't worry, I will clean them. All right, so. Let's see, I've gotten pretty good at this. Now you always want to uh, squeeze a little bit before the nail, before the glue actually comes out. Uh, the reason for this is so you don't get a huge glob. And sometimes I actually squeeze, yeah, I, so I squeeze a little bit out. And it's okay if it goes a little bit on the nail because it will, um, like, you actually don't want to flood your cuticles with nail polish. So. Uh, I actually do it until I just feel it covering the edge of my finger. So I'm actually kind of doing it like I'm starting it on my, my actual skin, not on the cuticle. And so I prefer using smaller glue bottles. So one thing you might notice is you're like, okay, she doesn't seem like she knows where she's going with that, that bottle of, of white craft glue. <laughs> And I'm actually better at painting my nails with my left hand, and I'm trying to do it with my right hand. Yes, I am right-handed, but I'm actually kind of ambidextrous. So some uh, projects I actually do a lot better uh, with my left hand. And so then this glue has to dry. So while it's drying, I probably will turn everything off and film another video while I'm filming this one, because might as well make use of our, of our time. So close my nail glue bottle. And remember what I've said before, you can tell if someone's had sight before and then lost it because their eyes will continue to look like, so for instance, I know where I'm holding my hand and so I can technically, it looks like I'm looking at my hand even though I can't even see my hand. Um, I do that with people when I'm talking, like I hear their voice coming from a direction and I look right at them. So <clears throat> right now when I'm filming, I always set it up so that when I'm sitting up straight, my camera is set up right directly in front of me so that it looks like I'm looking at my camera. So it looks like I'm looking at you. And um, like there are times I forget where the camera is. And there are times where I think, like I think there are times when my eyes aren't actually looking at you at all, even though I'm trying. <laughs> I don't know. 
So yeah, I'll let this dry and start another video again when I go to do all the other steps. Setting up my second camera. And so the nail, the uh, nail, <laughs> the glue is almost completely dry. Now one thing you can do is you can use a cuticle pusher and along your nail just gently push uh, any glue residue back off the fingernail because sometimes when I try and I just use my other thumbnail. I just, I just, yeah, I just use my other thumbnail and I just do that and um, I pull it back up onto the onto the fingernail or I gently like pull it away or yeah so I just I just do that I'm doing that real fast I just realized I need to keep my hand on the on the table on the table all right so and the more you do this and practice the easier it gets and like I was talking to someone and this is the thing not a lot of places are teaching you to think outside of the box so painting your nails you have to think outside of the box and like, you know, they say, oh, use Vaseline around the edge. If you do that and you have nail polish on the side of your nail that you accidentally did too much petroleum jelly or Vaseline and you're doing that, that nail polish actually never dries while it's in contact with that petroleum jelly. And then when you're trying to wipe it off, it just makes a total mess. So for me, that was not an option of doing nails. And so it irritates me every time someone's like, well, you could always do this. And I'm like, okay, have you done it? Have you done it yourself? Um, because I find a lot of people that are telling these remedies to try, they have not even done it themselves. So anyways, okay. So I'm going to put on my base coat. And I know which one that is because I have, it has its own, own interesting bottle. And it's a peel off. So... Now keep in mind, I have done this over and over and over, like I kept doing my nails while I was blind, uh, while I was losing my sight. So I think that that keeps me from, like that gives me a bit of an advantage because I can still, and the nice thing is with these fingertip guides is I can put a pinky against it and that gives me an idea how far up my fingernail is going to be and so then I just back it up and do a couple of swipes. And I can be as messy as I need to. Now, when you are pulling off the nail guides, you need to pull them off straight off. Don't lift them up because you'll be peeling off any nail polish by accident. So you need to... Yeah, sorry, I have to stop talking and concentrate. So, yeah. So really, once you have the glue on and you have the nail guides on, there really isn't... A huge way that you can mess up your nails and it really does come down to practice and you also want Vicks Vapor Rub because if you mess up and you get nail polish on your nail you will um, you will you can just rub that vapor rub on it and that vapor rub will take it right off the skin so it's it's really cool how it works so again I'm gonna walk you through the step I almost have these done um, I put my pinky against the nail guide and then I put my fingernail brush down on top of the nail. I slide it up towards the cuticle and swipe it down and uh, my pinky always like always gets stuff on it. It's not that big of a deal. Um, you could when you're pulling like when you're dragging the fingernail polish down your fingernail like pull your pinky away. For some reason my mind never never um, never thinks that much. I never think that much about anything. That's a, that's a warning to my future future fiance. <laughs> Do you know what you're getting into, William? I don't think. <laughs> All right, so that has to dry. Um, I like to put a couple of layers of this on, um, just to make sure because it's my peel off base coat, so that I can pull it off later. Um, I like to do a couple of notes, uh, a couple of coats, uh, just to make sure I. I have all the nail surface covered so it makes it easier and um, yeah so we could talk while it dries now when I'm doing my base coats I am really bad I don't always wait completely and you want to be careful doing that because when you mix nail polishes even if they're the same brand but a different color they have a different co chemical compound and so when you mix them you actually can end up ruining your nail polishes faster by doing that and um, so don't do what I do. <laughs> Wait for it to completely dry. And let's see, I'll try and talk better through it. 
And again, keep your nail polishes and stuff in the fridge. Not only does it extend the shelf life of your nail polish, but it, you can feel it easier when you're applying nail polishes. Now for me, the, the more layers I add, the harder and more challenging it gets because the less I can feel how far up that nail polish is going. But like I said, I don't worry like too, too much about it because once you have that nail, like I put that, the glue so that it almost goes right up to my first knuckle. So it goes almost right up to my first knuckle, all the glue. Um, and you know, you can even put a couple of layers of glue down just to really make sure you don't have any kind of leaking or anything like that. And this really, like, use non-toxic school glue. I did not know this, but there is actually school glue that is out there that is toxic, so it has to say non-toxic on it. So one thing I would recommend, and here's another blind tip for you. Um, when you have a product that you use, have someone take a picture and actually create, you could create a binder and have pockets that your pictures go in with braille or you braille right on the picture uh, what that product is. So if you, if you can't go to the store and someone has to go to the store with you, they have a, a picture of the product that you're getting. And that just makes it so much easier. Like if you have a specific product that's by a specific brand name and you don't like other brand names, like for instance with me, I, if I'm going to have ketchup on something, I do not actually like Heinz ketchup. I grew up with no name. Our family had to grow up cheap, okay? No judgment. Um, I grew up with no name condiments. So for me, um, whenever I eat something that's different, like, I don't know. Heinz, it like to me it doesn't taste good. I don't like it. So yeah. All right. So I actually don't think I'm gonna put a second layer. I thought about it and then I was like, I'm taking way too long. So you always want to make sure you close up the lids tightly. Again, I'm a hypocrite. I always forget until I knock a bottle over and then I'm like, oh yeah. All right. So now you do want to take your nail guides off when you do your last and final coat. That way, because every time you put a wet layer of polish on dry, it re-wets the layers beneath it. And so you want to do that when uh, you want to take those nail guides off after your your last polish has or your last layer has just been put on. That way you don't accidentally pull off all your nail polish, especially if you're using a peel off. Okay, and then matte. All right, so. Um, and you know what? I challenge other YouTubers that do nails uh, to do this. Get the nail tips, nail guides, and see if you can do it without looking. It's, it's hard. It's really hard. So again, so I'm putting my matte coat on. I put my finger, my pinky, uh, to the edge of the guide, and I apply the nail polish over the nail. And... Okay, and I'm going on to my ring finger now, and I put my finger, my fingertip onto the nail guide, and I put the nail polish down on top of there. And these are just thin little layers, they're not like thick gobby layers, so I make sure to really drag that brush, the one side of the brush up against the side of the bottle, because you really want to have that that bottle like that so yeah and yeah so again I have a habit of looking like it's it really is a habit of looking at what I'm doing even though I can't see what I'm doing so it's just kind of it's just funny that way so Alrighty, so that is my matte coat. Now, because I take so long to do my nails, usually that first nail is usually pretty much done by the time I do my next one. So then I put my color on. Alright, so I have the color. And again, I will try and put links. Um, I don't even know if I can find links for this stuff. Like, I know people have asked me, like when I did my makeup tutorial videos, People were asking what the palette was and like where I got it and like to be honest that stuff I got was like from so long ago. So if you want to know what this makeup look looks like, watch my video about Dollar Tree because this makeup look actually came from the Dollar Tree so yeah. 
Okay, so pinky. And it's actually easier if you can pick a nail polish or something that you, um, that they all have the same length in brushes. Mine don't. My peel off and my matte and like my color, they all have a different length of brush. So that always makes it a little bit more challenging and a little bit harder when I'm trying to paint my nails. And this one you'll probably see how many mistakes I make when I'm painting my nails because all the others were clear. And you'll see how much I'm going up on over the edges and up over the sides and everything like that. But at the same time, I don't think I do too bad to be honest. Like I'm not trying to boast, but I don't think I do that bad. Alright, and so I'm not going to, oh, I am going to let this uh, dry or semi-dry and put on a second coat just to make sure I have full coverage. And then I do like one layer of my top coat after everything has dried. All right. Okay, so I let it dry, and with these bottles, I'm actually really good at putting the nail polish but the nail polish applicator back in the bottle because I've had so much practice with that. So the other ones I'm not that good at. <laughs> Alright, so I'll let that dry, and then I'll come back for, actually I'll do my second coat, and then I'll do my final coat and take off everything. Just because I don't want to waste everybody's time. My videos are always too long because I ramble way too much. Okay, I'm back to finally do the clear coat. And I will turn on my second angle camera here. There we go. Alright. So I'm getting my clear coat. Alright, so. Again, I just touch the tip of... I always use my pinky, so whether it's on the bottle that I'm, I'm going to use, so I put on that clear coat. Now remember what I told you about when you're putting on that final coat, that you, um, you peel off that guide, you just pull it straight down, and then any glue that was sticking up over the edge of the... Alright, and I just peel that off. And my nails should be done. Now my nails sometimes, sometimes they're more perfect than others. I won't know until it's dry. And then sometimes they're not. So it's just really, the, like I did it in a hurry. I probably really should have taken a lot more time for today's video than I did. Um, but, you know, it's a hit and a miss. The more you do it, the better you get at it. And it just really, it does come down to how much time you have to do it. Okay, so... Yeah, I do that and I pull off again. You want to pull the nail guide straight down, and what that does is it helps to loosen off. Oh, I can feel it pull, so it actually took the glue with it. I can feel glue. So I mucked up that nail, that was my fault. So sometimes, if you start feeling the nail, the glue pulling down from the skin above your nail, you might want to stop and gently pull pick it off of the, so maybe I didn't wait long enough for that to saturate, okay, so, so I'm now pulling down and out instead of just straight out, because that way it, the glue won't drag down over top of my nail so I can feel it and so then the glue I pull up towards my finger and around and pull that off okay and like this and the, like I say, the more you practice it, the better you're going to get at it and the easier it's going to be. Now for me, I have to do one hand at a time um, because the nail guides, they are tricky to work on once you have them on your fingers. So, and then just like, go ahead and look at each finger and see, well, not my 
not my completely blind followers. Sorry about that. But like some of my sighted followers or my visually impaired who they can see close up. Like obviously you don't want to be doing nail polish close to your face. Um, but you can look at each finger and say, oh, okay, which finger, which finger looks better close up now? And what did I do different on that nail than I did the other nails? And you, you learn as you go, and that's just really, really great, learning as you go, because you, you know, you get things done. So, and doing it this way, you have minimal cleanup, and it's just, it's just great. So, and you can always have a friend go over again that clear coat, okay, after you pull everything off. Um, and that just, if there's any loose edges, that just sticks them down to the nail. Alright, and so I'm not going to take the time to do my other hand on camera um, just because I find it easier if I'm not talking. So if I'm talking, I get distracted and I don't do nearly as good of a job as I normally do. It's the same when I do my makeup. If I'm talking while I do it, it just it just doesn't get done as nice. I don't know why, but um, yeah, so you tell me. How did it turn out? Fairly good? And. Like I said, I got distracted multiple times when I was trying to talk while doing it, and I feel like I didn't do as good of a job as I normally do. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to subscribe. I'm trying to reach 1,000 subscribers, and I'm trying to broaden my reach on YouTube. I'm trying to educate both the sighted so they know what people who are visually impaired or blind are capable of. Apparently, I'm not capable of speaking English. Um, and then I'm also trying to reach my blind and visually impaired community as well because sometimes we might know of a way that just works a little bit easier or better or different than the way we're doing it and we're like, oh, that way is easier for me. And you don't know until you hear these ideas. So I am trying to reach a, a broad spectrum of people and you sharing my videos on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. I'm not on Instagram because uh, I can't figure out how to make it work as someone who's blind. So. Anyways, uh, definitely subscribe, like, and share my videos. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!